Existing Foreign Corporate Control Bill. First reading. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I call Fletcher Tabuto. I move that the Fighting Foreign Corporate Control Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Select Committee to consider the bill. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First is deeply concerned about the ISD provisions currently included in the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. Nobel laureate economists, senior medical experts, international law experts, trade experts, international human rights experts and more and more everyday New Zealanders are growing increasingly concerned as they learn more about the non-trade elements of this treaty. The reality is this government has kept secret from the people of New Zealand just what it is they are negotiating and even why. For years now, New Zealand First has asked this government to make the policies in this treaty negotiation public to the people of New Zealand. They have not done that despite international precedent from the EU, for example. Which is why I stand here proudly in support and presenting the foreign, Fighting Foreign Corporate Control Bill, sir. Tim Grosser recently labelled any concerns or counter-arguments as politically irrelevant and said the views of those New Zealanders were driven by ideology and not based on evidence. So clearly the manifestation of third-term-itis. They ask us to trust them, but they have not earned it, sir. The ambition of the TPP is huge. Nearly 40 per cent of the trading world will be included in this agreement, and I, for one, can actually understand why we would like to be a part of that, sir. Our exporters compete against US firms, for example, who have huge protections. We would like for the playing field to be levelled so our businesses can enjoy the same access to our competitors' markets that we allow others here already. But the TPP is also about renegotiating global investment rules. It includes legal rules covering issues such as investor protections and intellectual property rights. These rules allow foreign corporations to sue governments if they introduce policies that interfere with corporate profits. Even the perceived loss, sir, of potential profits is ground for suit. This is the investor state provision that this government is allowing into our trade negotiations. Even the most optimistic supporters of the TPP, for example, have to concede that this rule may not only prove to be very costly, but it will, without a shadow of a doubt, also reshape our democracy. We believe that those who have voiced their concerns are not only politically relevant, Mr Grosser, but further, New Zealand First believes that as New Zealand is one of the oldest continuous democracies on this earth, to have a select few ministers and the Prime Minister sign this supposed free trade agreement on behalf of all New Zealand, before it has been seen by all parliamentarians, before it has been seen by the Foreign Affairs and Trade Select Committee, before it has been seen by even your national backbenchers or your support parties, it is a travesty that is being undertaken in the name of democracy. And it is a failure, a failure to understand where the people of this country stand, sir. It is arrogance, Mr Bennett, pure and simple. Why? Because the details of this negotiations are completely concealed from the New Zealand public. Yet they are available to over 600 United States corporations who have made in-depth contributions to the negotiation process, dictating the terms and conditions Mr Grosser seems ready to accept at any cost. Further, the negotiating documents will remain confidential for a further four years after negotiations have been concluded or abandoned. New Zealanders may therefore, sir, be subject and bound to essentially a secret agreement which will be virtually impossible to reverse. Other countries have started to try and remove the ISDS provision from, the trade, from their trade agreements, only to find it will take 
25 years to do so. International trade is complicated stuff, sir, which is why I'm going to go slow for the national backbenchers. In the early years of trade, the focus was on transboundary tariffs, with a goal of actually levelling the playing field, so goods and services could more easily flow between nations. Today's trade agreements are a wholly different beast, sir. And instead of tariffs, they increasingly seek to reduce so-called non-tariff trade barriers. These non-tariff trade barriers can be any law, any rule, or any government support that may have the effect of limiting trade or reducing corporate profits. And they include such basic safeguards, for example, as drinking water, environmental protection, and even fair labour laws. The ISD provisions were originally designed to stop third world nations repatriating assets from foreign companies. But ISDS now allows foreign corporations that believe its profits have been hampered by a country's laws or rules to challenge the host government. So this is the problem with ISDS. Foreign corporates do not have to use New Zealand law to settle those disputes between themselves and our government. Luckily, uh, the foreign corporates who have had grievances with New Zealand in the past have actually used the New Zealand legal process, and I'm proud to say that actually uh, my understanding is New Zealand has successfully defended all of those claims in New Zealand courts. This is a wonderful precedent, but does not justify the head-in-the-sand approach from this government moving forward. So the ISDS provisions allow foreign corporates, not New Zealand firms, to go to a tribunal. This is not an actual court of law here or overseas. What the national backbenchers might not understand is these tribunals only consist of three players. A corporate lawyer for the country, a corporate lawyer for the foreign corporate firm, and a foreign corporate for presiding over the proceedings, sir. They play interchangeable roles and clearly over time have conflicts of interest. Only the foreign corporate can sue. A government cannot use the same tribunals to hold those corporates to account themselves. I ask the government and its MPs here today why you would happily sit there and watch our freedom to govern ourselves is handed over to unaccountable secret tribunals which give, in, which give foreign corporates an unfair advantage circumventing laws with the privilege of suing us added into the bargain. Remember, Kiwi firms, Kiwi firms, Mr Bennett, will not have access to the same process here at home. ISDS is becoming a big business opportunity for big business, sir. Corporations are now selling their actions against nations to investors at discounted rates and the investment companies are taking the gamble of a win with the possibility of billion dollar payouts. The number of claims grows every year. We are told that the ISD provisions within our treaties are world class, and given that we have yet to be sued, they probably are. But do not forget or ignore the fact that many countries have been sued and have lost. The tribunal process is usually always secret, and at the request of foreign corporates, so where countries have thought themselves protected by similar exemptions and protections, this has not always been the case. So I anxiously now sit, sir, and wait in anticipation to hear from backbench national MPs who have not been briefed on ISD provisions in our next trade agreement, do, know, do not know what's in it. And so I say this will be interesting, sir. Thank you.